I will be talking about uh, nanoceramic aluminum substrates, which sounds a bit unusual. And uh, in essence, it's a very simple thing. You take a piece of aluminum of any shape and form, a flat board or a heat sink like this, and you put it into a tank and you apply an electrochemical process which builds a layer of ceramic on the surface of that object. And you have aluminum ceramic, in our case nano-ceramic material, a substrate on which you can build your circuit. The trick is how you apply this material. It's made electrochemically, it's made in a tank. It is not anodizing, it's a different process which makes a very fine nano crystalline size oxide on the surface of aluminium and you grow it with a certain speed and you can control the thickness. It can be as thin as 5 microns and at 5 microns you have quite uniform layer or you can grow it as thick as 50 or 60 microns depending on what you really want from this substrate. How much breakdown voltage you want from this dielectric on top of aluminium. Well, our company is very young. It was founded in the year 2010 in Cambridge. Though the people who founded the company, they are in uh, ceramic coating business for good 20 years and applied this process for various applications uh, quite different from electronic applications including uh, sports and even aerospace applications. Uh, the reason why this company was founded was to use that process specifically for electronic applications to create this aluminium ceramic substrate and uh, uh, there are some differences from what we are doing for non-electronic applications from what we are doing here and those differences are dictated by two main requirements we need to build ceramic material which has high thermal conductivity and high dielectric strength. To build a dielectric insulating layer straight on aluminium which will be which will satisfy your breakdown voltage requirement. If you want 500 volts, if your customer requires 500 volts breakdown voltage, you grow as thick layer as needed for that, but not thicker. You can control the thickness. The breakdown voltage is dictated by the uh, dielectric strength of the material which we are applying by ceramic and it is between 50 and 100 volts per micron. It means if you need 500 volts for your applications and not more, you don't need more, then you apply just 10 microns, only 10 microns of dielectric and then build your circuit, your pads and tracks straight on top of that. It means your material, whether it's a flat board or a heat sink itself, becomes your substrate. So that is the product aluminum ceramic substrate. The technology is electrochemical process which enables to apply ceramic directly, actually to grow ceramic directly on aluminum of any shape and form. And our targets was to reach as high thermal conductivity as dielectric strength as we could and to enable 
so-called chip on heat sink design. Oh, really? This is the same heat sink which I showed you with a thin layer of ceramic with copper metallization which was made, I need to say thanks to Spirit Circuit, to Steve Driver at that company, they helped us in the development. And then chips sitting straight on the heat sink with a lens. There is no PCB here. The chips, non-packet chips, are sitting straight on the heat sink. Well, the reason why we started all this work is uh, quite simple, that the lower temperature, working temperature of the LEDs we can achieve, uh, the longer that LED will work and the more light it will produce consuming the same energy. That is, if you reduce working temperature, or it's often called the PN junction temperature of the diet, by just 11 centigrade degrees, you double the lifetime of LED and you produce about 4% more light per watt consumed. And that temperature of the LED, definitely it depends on the ambient temperature and it also depends on the total resistance of the whole stack, of the whole system, of the LED package, of the PCB, of the uh, thermal interface material, of the heatsink itself. It's a sum of all the resistances and in order to reduce the working temperature of LED you need to minimize those resistances. You can do it two ways, either to get rid of some of them completely, and those remaining to make the minimum, minimum uh, you can achieve. So this is exactly what we've done with this design when you apply your dielectric straight on the heat sink and then place your chip, unpacked chip, on top of that, you get rid of most of the layers, bringing it to bare minimum. You cannot have non-insulated substrate, so we insulate substrate with a layer of ceramic, which has a high thermal conductivity. This is where the second parameter works. You reduce the resistance of that layer. Well, and uh, basically, uh, we believe in, in the past two years we uh, achieved our target and uh, I will tell you a bit more about the figures, about the parameters which we reached. Uh, this picture demonstrates the difference between the standard approach which I already described with a package chip sitting on the PCB, which you are very, very much familiar with, and then bonded on the heat sink. On the right-hand side, you can see this bit, which is a, that very heat sink, the same heat sink, with a ceramic layer on top, which is a dielectric material, insulator, with a high thermal conductivity, with copper tracks formed straight on that insulator and your chip bonded there. So you have, instead of multi-layered thermal pass, the shortest possible thermal pass. You cannot get rid of, of your uh, insulating dielectric. Then really you do not need thermal interface material and in essence your PCB is your board. Obviously, you are saving components and you are saving costs. Uh, quite recently, uh, Cambridge-based company TTP, the technology 
partnership made calculations on the base on the basis of this model and this work was uh, uh, sponsored by carbon trust and they calculated that this di this the difference in those two approaches brings to about 23 24 percent of your cost reduction that's a ballpark figure and uh, uh, because we use uh, electrochemical process and as I said you can put in your tank whatever you want you can apply your ceramic layer on objects of any shapes you can put them on the flat boards and then you have a PCB with ceramic layer instead of field epoxy or fluoropolymer as a dielectric and the thickness of the layer can be controlled so for various breakdown voltage requirements thickness could be different then you can apply it straight on the heat sink and on some other even more exotic objects they need to be made out of aluminium like uh, on the body of a heat pipe and then you have cheap on heat pipe uh, as for the technology uh, it's a proprietary process which we developed ourselves uh, we patented it and uh, as I already mentioned we we've proven it in the past for uh, various applications and they they are used in manufacturing in in few industries now it's a robust and to be honest quite non-expensive process I must say uh, it, it can work with different shapes and different thicknesses and the metal tracks can be applied again using more than one technology we use uh, today three different ways of forming copper tracks one of them is quite simple we adhesively bond it through a very very thin layer of adhesive just a few microns then we use uh, metal spattering which does the same job but there is no adhesive layer and it's a direct metallization and of course we use screen printing for the same purpose so you can choose your own metallization type whatever you are more uh, used to as for the material material you probably could already guess it's oxide of the substrate itself it's not the same stuff as anodic layer which is highly porous column like structure it's a very dense oxide which has grain size about 20 40 nanometers which was shown by XRD analysis of the material it has thermal conductivity here is important bit between 6 and 7 watt meter Kelvin which is a fairly high value you probably are aware that modern PCBs, good PCBs, they have thermal conductivities up to 3 watt meter Kelvin. So 3 and 6 is twice different, not 20%, 100% higher. And what is also quite important, uh, you can apply thinner layers when needed. For a thousand volt breakdown voltage requirement, you apply just about 20 microns of layer and the thinnest you can have with your PCB supplier is about 40 microns, 38 microns. So you have twice higher thermal conductivity and twice thinner layer. You can calculate the result. It's four times less thermal resistance. And the dielectric is the bottleneck. This is where most of the uh, thermal resistant takes place uh, well this is just one of the examples though this is a fairly old example it's nearly one year old we made some more stuff uh, again it was a project uh, which was uh, supported by uh, TSB and uh, our job was to make basically PCB material normal flat 1.5 millimeter aluminium 
PCB material with uh, 20 microns of our ceramic and uh, a company called uh, uh, Juice Technologies which are uh, development company uh, in LED area they uh, populated the, those boards with uh, uh, LEDs and they made comparative studies they compared them with the standard PCBs which uh, were sitting on this uh, seagull down light and they measured that the LED temperature reduction was about 24% and LED output increase was about 9% from which they calculated, they have not measured it, the last thing, that the lifespan increase should be about four times. So what we're offering, we are a young company still small but we are happy to work with you on new product development we have modest manufacturing facilities and though we can produce decent size test samples batches and uh, for those companies which are serious we might consider even licensing the process uh, if the volumes would justify that we are based near Cambridge, easy to find us. So thank you very much for your listening and your questions are most welcome, thanks. Thanks so much, Paolo. Any questions? Ten micros in five minutes. That's quick. Right. So it's faster than conventional anodizing. Then. It's faster than anodizing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And it's again, it's a different process than anodizing. It's not anodizing. Is there any scope for increasing the thermal conductivity further? Do you think? Well, uh, it might be achieved by even further reducing the uh, grain size. It means the to increase in the density of the material. Aluminium oxide has about 20 watt meter Kelvin. Yeah. We are about at the level of a third. So there is a room of going further. Yeah, so I was thinking, still room to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. More questions? The uh, electrolyte is, uh, is a green material, is it? Thank you for this question. It's <laughs> very green. You can, East Anglian, uh, Anglian water, gave us permission that you can dispose the electrolyte into the sewage. It is less hazardous than water from your dishwasher. But what does it contain? <laughs> it contains uh, 99 point whatever percent of demineralized water and the rest is our know-how. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, th thanks very much. Okay.